Hey guys, it's Ricerboy, and today we're going to be talking about problems, specifically with the first generation QR25 engine. Because while I myself have some problems, like not putting away my clothes after they're done from the washing machine, the first generation QR25 engine is known to have a couple of issues, and today I'm going to go over the three biggest ones and how you can fix all of them. The first issue has to do with the factory exhaust manifold found on the engine. As you can see, my car still has the stock exhaust manifold because it has the standard heat shield on it. Now back in 2002, when Nissan was first designing this engine, they wanted it to be as low emission as possible. So while they also have a standard catalytic converter back in the exhaust system, they put a pre-catalyst material inside of the exhaust manifold. That's why when you look at it when it's removed from the car, it has a bulge in the middle of it in order to hold all that pre-catalyst material. Now once the pre-catalyst starts disintegrating, it can actually go back inside of the engine and destroy the valve train and cylinder head by putting these particulates inside of the oil. The way that you resolve this issue is either by manually removing the pre-catalyst from the stock header, which is something that I did, or by switching to an aftermarket header. Now, switching to an aftermarket header does give you increased horsepower and completely removes any risk of having pre-catalyst material inside of your engine. The downside, however, is that you have more heat in your engine bay. And the odd thing about that is that it would help contribute to another one of the most famous problems with this engine. And that problem is found right here in the form of the car's alternator. Because while this alternator seems like it's easy to get to, one of the downsides of Nissan placing it here is that it's directly next to the exhaust manifold. So most of the time when people get aftermarket exhaust manifolds, the extra heat from that goes right to the alternator and makes them fail prematurely. Now I in fact encountered this issue myself, which is why my current alternator looks as sparkly as it does. However, people on the forum have been less lucky than I have been, because when these things go bad, you start to smell a burning smell, and there's even people on the forums who have had theirs catch on fire while they were coming home. That is definitely not something that you want to have happen in your engine bay. Now, while you can find new exhaust manifolds for this engine for under $100, the solution for protecting your alternator is even cheaper. That's why I'm very happy to announce that I've been working with a company that I found on Instagram called SC Concepts. They have developed this heat shield for the QR25 that goes in between your alternator and your exhaust manifold. Now what I like about this company is that not only do you have an option of selecting what type of metal that's used, but you can even get heat tape on the heat shield itself to continue protecting your alternator from overheating and catching on fire potentially. Now whether you do long drives or you regularly track your car or do autocross, I think this is definitely a must have protection for this engine given that I've experienced the alternator issue myself. In fact, my old alternator actually got stuck to the water pump housing on my engine, which meant that my repair and replacing that alternator cost well over a hundred dollars and was a real pain in the neck at that. So please, I highly recommend that you get this part so that way you don't have to go through as much anguish as I did removing this monstrosity from my engine bay. So because of that, I'm going to have SC Concepts Instagram page and their shop in my description and in the comments down below because I'm all for supporting small businesses and more importantly, these really smart solutions for fixing problems with these cars because I wouldn't support a company and feature it on this channel if I didn't believe that what they were doing was right and that they were making quality products. Now, since this heat shield is very simple to install and comes with this shield along with the bolt and some washers, why don't we put it on here to demonstrate just how easy it is to protect your alternator. So first, we're going to remove the heat shield on the stock header. So then, after taking up those four effortless 10 millimeter bolts, we can wiggle this heat shield around enough where we can get this one in. So now this hole on it lines up with this hole on the block, and this hole lines up with this hole on the alternator bracket. And as you can see, even with my stock exhaust manifold, this thing slides right in and matches up with the bolt holes. If you're worried if this heat shield will work on your car, something that's actually great to know is that this also works with plenty of aftermarket headers, which is why when I put on my 2J Racing Medusa header, I am also going to reinstall this to show you guys just how well it fits with just about any application. So now with that heat shield installed, we can get to the last problem that I'm gonna talk about today, which is the butterfly screws 
found on the intake manifold of this car. Because one of the technologies that's been implemented on this engine that's only found on the first generation QR motors is the dual length intake manifold. Which means that there is an actuator found near the intake manifold that at a certain amount of RPM switches over to a new set of runners for the intake to add more horsepower at higher RPM. The downside, however, is that the screws that hold these flaps down get loose over time and when they inevitably fall out, they get digested by the engine, causing immediate death to the powertrain. Now, it's very common for people to open up this intake manifold and remove those screws, put Loctite on them, and put them back in. There's also people who convert these first generation QRs over to the second generation intake manifold. And there's companies out there such as 2J Racing that have conversion kits out there, but it's a lot cheaper and easier to uh, just Loctite and butterfly screws. Now with this car, in fact, I have not done that yet, so I might actually make a video where I take this off and show you guys through the whole process. However, it's on the forums and it's very common to do on these engines. Most of the time, if you hear a rattling around 2000 RPM, that means the clock is ticking and you need to get to doing that now. So before I leave you guys today, the last point of discussion that I'd like to make is on oil consumption with these engines because you might have noticed that I have this red canister right here attached to my engine and that my friends is a catch can. Now I installed this a while back and made a video of it when I did, but the basic premise of it is that when the engine burns oil and releases it through the valve cover, PCV valve, at the top of the engine, it must first go through this catch can before it goes back into the intake manifold. Now since both the exhaust manifold issue and the intake manifold issue are characterized by more oil burning, it's a very common preventative maintenance uh, thing on these engines in order to get a catch can in the system. I would highly recommend you do that if you have one of these engines. And I noticed myself that I had less oil burning after I put it in, just because mine works more as an expansion tank from what I've seen, on allowing the oil to go through before it goes back into the intake manifold and is combusted along with the gas. So I definitely hope that you guys are having a good experience with your QR engine because most of the time people are very polarized on this engine. Some people do proper maintenance and are big fans of it. And there's other people out there who don't know about these pitfalls and end up hating this car because they don't know how to take care of the engine. However, I hope that with this advice and by knowing these three major problems, you can help resolve most of the issues found with your Sentra or Altima for that matter. So if you want to see more videos related to preventative maintenance on this engine, then let me know in the comments. Like I mentioned, I think I might do a video on repairing the butterfly screws. I can also do a temperature comparison with this alternator heat shield that I just put on if you want to see what difference it makes. And I'm really up for any suggestions if you want to make sure to keep your QR engine running for as long as this one can. So on that note, guys, thanks for watching and peace out.